Beth, the expected peak date has changed since this outbreak began. So what does peak mean and when will we know when we've actually hit it? Hi, thanks so much. Um, so the peak date can be a little bit of a confusing term, I think. And there's a number of different ways we can think about the meaning of peak. But when the governors of the different states talk about peak from a data modeling perspective, the short and the sweet of it is what they're really trying to measure is the number of recovered cases on a daily basis versus the number of uh, infections on a daily basis. So in other words, what we've seen so far is really a plateau in the number of infected cases. But whether this trend will continue is, in other words, going to be really dependent on what happens in the short term with long-term care facilities. So it's important to note that when we're talking about the peak, what we're really referring to is this plateau of active and confirmed cases. So as a practical matter, what we're seeing is, of course, a dramatic slowdown in the growth of number of cases. You go back a month ago and we had 47% growth in the number of cases day on day. This weekend, we had 4% growth day on day. So we have done a lot to really flatten that curve thanks to our social distancing policies that have dramatically slowed the growth of the virus. At the same time, we still have too many new cases. So what we really wanna do is to get that number down absolutely to zero or as close to it as we can. Well, Beth, how accurate are, are those models if we're not vastly expanding testing? We use a number of different models in order precisely to ensure that we do have some accuracy to what we're doing. And we look at both short-term and longer-term predictions, and we go back and we say, how accurate were our predictions? Is our curve uh, reflective of what we're actually seeing on the ground? So whereas we may have started out in the first days sort of looking at um, what happened in Italy, what happened in Wuhan, as we began to gather more data about what the situation was on the ground in New Jersey, we've been able to really adapt those models, make them truly dynamic to exactly what's going on on the ground. And we're seeing actually a great deal of accuracy with regard to our predictions. Beth, how do these models measure the impact of social distancing? Because that's data that we weren't able to look at for those first couple of weeks. So in fact, some of these uh, um, models are actually, the ones that we use, actually do factor in social distancing and we can see the dramatic impact of those policies. So you see the impacts right away. I mean, we started to actually, I mean, we measure what's actually happening on the ground. So not everything we do is predictive. What we're also doing is just measuring the cases day by day. You can see that yourself publicly on the COVID-19 information hub. Um, so what we're doing is actually tracking what's happening on the ground using that to make predictions and then seeing how our predictions pan out and going back to adjust the model, which means that we're taking account of what's actually happening on the ground as we develop the models. And what we try to ensure is that they're actually accurate. Is there one key piece of information that you would hope that the public can take away every day when the governor presents these, these briefings, gives these numbers, gives this data, is there one item, um, maybe to simplify, that, that folks can take away or should be looking to every day? So what we want to be looking to every day, in my view, is the rate of growth, the rate of spread of the virus, and the dramatic drop from closer to 50% day-on-day growth to now below 5% day-on-day growth as a result of social distancing should help us to understand, I think, the importance of why we're going through the sacrifice, why we all need to stay home, is because it's helped us to actually dramatically reduce that spread. We're still, unfortunately, growing, and we want to reduce that number to zero, but I think the important thing that people should take away is that we have data that allows us to see whether what we're doing is actually working. So when the governor says, please stay home, uh, not only does he mean it, but we have the data to back it up to show that it's working and to help people understand that it is making a dramatic difference. A lot that goes into it. Beth Simone Novak, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.